Why did nobody pick Huns in this tournament? Huns are weak against Mesosifs. Huns are not great on these maps. Well, it's hybrid maps, yeah, but when you put extra Huns like this, it just favors Mongols over Sifs like Huns. Um, and Huns are, like, the, the specialty of Huns is being a flexible Sif, but they're not necessarily a very powerful Sif. And I think that's why, pe you know, people prepared strategies and went for more of the powerful Sifs. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, Joan the Maid playing as the Mongols. I'm playing as the Mongols as well. I see a lot of arguments in the chat, guys. If you guys are really heated about something, just take it to DMs. Uh, but please avoid uh, avoid the big um, avoid the big arguments in the chat, and uh, that's basically the best way best way to not get too heated around here. All right. Yeah. Let's keep it clean. Exactly. Hans used to be good on Bay, but with like a billion deer, what do you do with Mongol? Exactly. Uh, so he here's my plan on Bay. Uh, my plan was just to lure in some deer. Uh, I think all I need is one deer, take two boars, and click up really fast to contest the center. Taro had a different plan. Taro wanted to deny my dock villager. So he you can notice he didn't lure any deer. He wanted to deny my dock villager and or try to kill it or just delay my dock a little bit. So that was his plan with his scouts. So I go for my deer. And I'm completely oblivious to what he's doing, of course. Uh, but he's coming over with his scouts. And I'm just pushing in my deer very, very, uh, you know, peacefully. Not, not trying to have any engagements so far. Alright. No heat of shot in the chat, guys. Exactly. Exactly. I like this one. Can't keep it clean on, can't keep it clean on pants. Literally every strike is below the belt. Oh god, that's very good. I, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the belt area, and this is below the belt. Oh, it's too good. Okay, so he goes, speaking of, you know, blows below, below the belt. Um, he's trying to hit my villager. Now, I'm only hovering here because I know I do some smooth quick walls, and I want to I wanna showcase in here. Boom! Get off my nuts, man! Let me get my dock up. And my scout which just come in. But I actually, I, I pulled that while luring a boy. I was very impressed with myself after this. I was like, oh, after I did this... You know, after I did this wall, I told myself, I'm not losing another game. I was like, I was on point. I was like, I'm not losing a game today. Um, so, yeah, I was quite I was quite pleased with that. And behind this, though, I was still for, I was still housed. Because I was obviously delayed here. And I was forced to do loom. And now I'm getting my dock up. So my dock is still heavily delayed. As you can see, he already has at... When I start building it, he's got 70%. So... He's got a much faster dock, but on the trade-off, he's got less HP on the scout, and I'm trading, I'm chasing him off. So, you know, qu quite a nice uh, trade-off for him, I think. But it's not the end of the world for me, and there might be some way to cover to recover from this position. Dial Death coming into the tier one sub. Thank you so much, bro. Really appreciate that. And uh, tier ones help me tons. Thanks for support, bro. All right. So, what's the plan from here? Both players. I think we're just going for a standard opening. I can probably fast forward through this. Uh, it's really just to contest the water a little bit and then play for uh, the mid game. Why no melee on hybrid maps? Well, melee, the melee game isn't great. They're more of a pure water sieve, I think. And even on pure water sieve, there's better, um, there's better sieves. It's weird. It's weird. But melee have their place on certain certain maps and all of them. This one with all the deer, you cannot go melee here. You have to go with with mongols or some other good land sieve. What are your preferred strategies in Feudal for Mongols? Usually Scout Rush is like the best the best opening for them. Fast matter arms are not too bad as well. It depends on the map, but I, I think Scout Rush most of the time would be good surgeon. Think that quick wall saved this game? Yeah, I believe so. If I, I oh like he goes again to try and hit me, but I do a nice defense. He did some good plays to again delay my second dock. So he's getting massive advantage. He's got two galleys coming out at 50%, and I'm only just getting out one, and the other one is even more delayed. However, I do now chase away his scout and eventually kill it. So again, it's it's a pros and cons to these kind of cheesy strategies that he's going for. However, now I have to play nothing but defense on, on the water. So, And I get my fish kicked out. So, you know, this is a pretty bad situation economically for me. I, I don't lose a, a fishing ship, but I'm you know, forced to, to have them idle and also forced to play defensively. So I think overall this is a great play from him. I don't know why he didn't kill my build here. This is weird. He didn't go for my villager out. I was playing it extremely risky being out here with my build. I even put my fishing ships back to work. 
So quite greedy play, but he brings in the, the typical Tati demo. Oh, and I think I take a big one here. Oh, that was so bad. Did I get the repairs in time? I think now he goes to the villager. Yeah, I think he gives the village some love here. But at this point, I lost water pretty much. Like, there's nothing I can really do. Yeah, he just goes to the villa. I'm like, ah, damn it. I lose the villa. Uh, meanwhile, he lost the scout, and I got my scout out here. But, uh, yeah, I'm down a villager. I'm losing the water, and I had my villas idle. And he's up three villagers, or three workers here. Which is actually village. No, he, no, he's up three villagers, actually. Two villagers. Two villas and a half, maybe. And now he kills the fishing ship. So, he actually has a massive lead at this point. Really, he has a massive lead. Now, that's the saying, NAC3 got me to back into AOE. Loved your commentary and gameplay. Keep it up, good. Keep it up, good content. Oh, keep up the good content. Thank you, Dial Death. Appreciate that, man. And there's a, actually a glare on my phone. I don't know why. Hold on, one sec. I, I have to close the lights. The glare on my phone that's really preventing me from doing stuff here. Oh, pause the game. One sec. No, it's not even sunlight. I, I wish it was sunlight, actually. I'd be getting some vitamin D off the back of it. I, I, it's not even sunlight. It's like a spotlight that's just randomly there in the back and is shining directly on my phone. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say sorry, go. Did I say sorry, go? No, I didn't. No. No way. <laughs> I didn't say sorry, go. Okay. Um... <laughs> you guys are such trolls, man. Okay. If I could type, I, I can't type. That's the only reason I didn't do it. <laughs> Sorry, go, man. Um, but uh, yeah, I end up losing the water here quite rapidly. I think I do an okay job of staying afloat. Oh, did I get a villager here? I think I got a villager. Yes, I got a vill. So I actually killed a vill here. Um, so that evened it out on, on the land, at least, in, in terms of vill killed. And I actually end up winning the water because of that demo. So, you know what? I was losing the water, but somehow managed to pull it back based on my defensive play. And actually kill his fishing ships. However, behind this, he has just more economy. He's getting a stable. He's more developed. I have ah, very little here to show for it. So my plan is just a full wall. And avoid any uh, aggression in the feudal age. And just work on getting some fishing ships out. And making use of my water uh, water control. of Getting that eco bonus pretty much here. Um, evening out the vill count very soon. By adding in uh, two fishing ships. We didn't say go. Uh, I wasn't ready. Sorry, Kuster, man. Listen, next time I'll say sorry, go, and you guys will have no problems. You guys will be ready. I add in two rounds of fish, so I go up to five fishing ships. I thought about adding more, but I thought, like, there's not that many deep sea fish here, so there's not, there's not really a point to go up to more than five fishing ships, in my opinion. Maybe seven could have been good, but I, I stopped at five. But actually, I changed my mind here. Plot twist. And I added more fire galleys, because I thought maybe he's coming back in the water. Oh, maybe a safe play for me. Adding in some fire galleys. Alright, so his plan is to go scouts. Do I know about this? I don't know about this. I've got, I've got in fact, no idea. But, I, I know that there's potential for him to attack me here. And, look at this. I wall at, like, the perfect time, I think. But I think I end up getting punished because of one tile. We'll see. We shall see. Uh, Puya in the chat is saying, this was my favorite game of the tourney. I'm hey, glad you liked it, man. It was... Definitely back and forth, and definitely very interesting, even though it was uh, a mere match here. They tried to snipe my fishing ships, I obviously didn't let that happen. And I'm uh, adding in more fire galleys, but I should stop, let's just get cancelled here. Cancel, yeah, oh my god, I'm smurfing, I forgot I cancelled that, but turns out I did. And this is the problem. First of all, homie, why are you in the outside of the walls? And so I just give this guy up and wall behind it. Oh, I almost got that here. I almost got the wall off, but not quite. Uh, but yeah, now it's quite, quite pickle. But I only lost one vill, and I still got the fully like full walls up, and I'm still able to take the deers. You know, that's fine. And now I realize, oh shit, I'm completely open on the bottom. But hold on, I got a plan. So I see the scouts looping around, and I have a plan. Fish ship's going back to drop off food. This, fi oh, I think which I think this fishing ship is the hero. I see him running in, and I just stop. 
<laughs> and I stop the fish here until I can bring back my navy. That saved me so much. You guys have no idea how much that saved me. If those three scouts got into my base, I don't even have a barracks right now. I have no barracks. That saved me so much. And since I fire saying play of the tourney, I swear it was the play of the game at least. Play of the game at least, so... Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, that, that fishing ship was sick. And I brought in my fire galleys back home. Oh, God. Okay, so like, at that point, I was like, holy moly. I survived that. But, you know, I'm in a great position here. And I'll tell you why. I have the fishing ships. I'm up only 25% later to cast leech. And that was because I was late on the market. It wasn't because of the position. And I'm going to go straight for Mangadai. I practiced this with Leary. If you go up... With the fishing ship advantage, you can you're able to go straight Mangadai, and the opponent cannot mirror you. Your opponent, if he goes for straight Mangadai as well, he will just be behind, and that's exactly what ends up happening. He tries to go for straight Mangadai, he ends up falling behind, and I end up getting a huge lead, which I later throw, but I get a huge lead for the time being. Oh man, alright. Did you watch any of the King Sancho versus Joan the Maid? Game one had uh had a board, ki board TC kill and game 2 was absolutely wild. I watched a little bit of it, but not too much because I was actually practicing for my own uh, own games at the time. Or playing my quarterfinals at the time as well. I forgot one or the other. But uh, I, I didn't catch too much of it, no. <clears throat> How do you think it was Leary you played for semis? Uh, I think it would have been close because we practiced together. So it's hard to say who would have came out on top. Really hard to say, actually. Probably come down to who plays it better on the day. There needs to be a hair of Fisher emotes? I don't know, it's just one play, you know? Just one play. Alright, so he gets up to the castleage. And his immediate thing is to drop two uh, town centers. Is this a good play or is it not? So on one hand, you get more economy. On the other hand, you will be super far behind when it comes to Mangadai numbers. However, he's he is up to, you know, castleage faster than me. So he maybe is able to get away with it. I've got a lot of economy and I'm ready to drop my castle ASAP. I actually go the castle first route, but I get both my eco upgrades, I get Balkan Arrow, and I'm ready to drop my castle now on the front. I debated like going out here to make it, but I didn't want to risk it in case he had crossbows or something. So I played it safe, got it defensively, and I think now I also go for a town center. Yes, so I will I will have my units up faster, but I will have my town centers up later, so I will have less economy overall. Uh, than he did. So he has the town centers up earlier, which gives him more eco and, and, and less of uh, and less of the military of the mega die. I've got a lot of questions in the chat. I'm gonna do my best to answer them as best as I can here. Um, how often do you glance at the score during the game for info? It depends if I'm looking for something. If I'm looking to see when he clicks up, I'll I'll stare at it like a lot. Uh, otherwise, I, I just want it once in a while to see if it switches. It's also usually in my peripheral vision, so I can kind of see if it flips or something like that. So I'd say every once in a while, unless I'm looking for something specific, then I'll look at it every like 10 seconds. Uh, you messed up this game and he messed up even worse. Yeah, kind of kind of that. But I think we both made good plays to, to put ourselves in good positions. Uh, yeah, but I, I do agree that we both had our throws, 100%. Would MBL have possibly been able to knock out Viper since his play is much more messy? I don't think so. I think betting against Viper is like really like risky. Like... Yeah, he, he could have. It's not impossible for MBL to beat Viper. He's done it before. But would he? I don't think so. That's just not on these maps, at least, in my opinion. Yeah, so my opponent is Tato here. So notice, I'm getting my Mangadai production out. And smart play for me, I go out immediately. The, the, the more time I spend here, the less time I'm aggressive and actually you know, doing damage to Tato. He goes for a boom first and now only gets his castle up. So I've got a lot more Mangadai numbers. But I do the mistake of defending too much with them, I think. If I ran directly uh, with them forward, I could have maybe picked up some monks and, and put a lot of pressure on him. But nonetheless, I you know, I, I still managed to mass them up better than my opponent can. All right, who is Joan the Maid? Joan the Maid is Tato. I've said this about like 10 times now. I'll type it out in the chat, maybe. Love the recasting. Hey, Jambleton, glad you enjoyed it, man. Uh, I figured I, I might as well, uh, I might as well re, you know, go over the game just in case some of you guys missed them live or I want to see my opinion of it. Oh, great micro from him to run away with the monk, and I got lucky here. This guy was converting for a long time. He had to sing the whole song and didn't quite manage to do that. 
Just play, put player name in the scoreboard? Oh, that could have been good. Yeah, I, I like to do John the Maid. Eh, maybe I should do Tato. Would be nice. I was in the edge of my seat this game. Yeah, this game is definitely back and forth. And you know what? This, in my opinion, was the deciding game of the series. Why? Because it's my home map, and it's what pushes me to 2-1, or it makes me fall behind 2-1 on my home map. Do I find this monk? Oh, nice for me. This is so good. I got so much value out of my Mangadai. Wait, no. Do I... <gasps> I ran past him! What? What? Really? I didn't look in the 30 seconds that I was hitting it? Oh, I go back for him. Okay, that, that's more like it. That's more like it. That's more like it. I, I knew I don't let monks go like this. Okay. And he, he doesn't even have Barking Arrow, so I'm just going to town on him right now. Uh, so he went he went so greedy, honestly. He went so greedy for a villain lead. And overall, I think that the, the getting the pressure out with the Mangadai and the faster imp is much more worth it than the Vils. How did I get into AoE? I got into AoE when my brothers were playing it back in the day. Our friend lent us a copy of The Conquerors and we downloaded it. We loved it. Uh, we played very casually. The, the Montezuma campaign it was like the most played, I think. We played against each other as well at some points. And I got into them. Uh, I got into the game by watching them and by playing campaign myself. Alright, so now he's got a couple monks and Mangada. He's in pure defensive mode, but I'm denying a TC. So my plan now is to make as much use of my military lead as possible and try to you know keep him at bay. Because look at this. <laughs> at bay, get it? Uh, he's got always two Mangadai less than me. And if I reinforce fast enough, if I send these Mangadai forward, I will always be able to maintain a Mangadai lead here. The only way I throw is if I get converted. So all I had to do was not get converted. This game was sick? Yeah, dude, uh, Roxy, oh, not dude, dude that. Uh, this game I think was, as I said before, the decider game of the series, and it was extremely close with throws on both sides. So from a viewer perspective, this is definitely one of the better games, I think. And even as a player's perspective, this is one of the better games of the series. At what point did you know his title before the series even started? Maybe you don't think so, but I low-key wish you and Tato went to seven games. HC3, it was so great. Congratulations. Thank you, Fallfell. Appreciate it. Uh, Jesus is saying in the chat, Hey, Harold, this game was amazing. T90 and Dave were absolutely sure, like four different times on who was winning it for sure. Went back and forth so often. Yes, indeed. Throw us from both sides, man. That's how it goes. Congrats on second place, Heraclap. Hey, thank you, ACW. Appreciate it. Tier 1 for 5 months. Thank you so much for the continued support. Uh, and yeah, second place, definitely not too bad. By the way, great micro from Tato here. He's got like half my numbers. Okay, not here, but he, he traded decently uh, as he was running back. He killed two Mangadai. So 2 for 2 and he had less numbers. I'll play. Solitary Soul coming with a Tier 1 for 4 months. Thank you so much, bro. Really appreciate the support from you as well. Uh, appreciate the subs, guys. Tier 1's helped me tons. I'll keep saying it. Oh man, Man Mangadai Micro is my favorite hobby. I always say it and I always will say it. It's literally my favorite pastime. Like, when, when I apply for a job, they're like, what do you do in your free time? I Micro Mangadai. Uh, like, what, what is that? Is that like some kind of like, uh, like crafts or something? Do you do that? Oh no, it's just like Micro Mangadai. But I do. It's just what it is, man. Like, it's so fun. Like, I can do this all day. So fun. Yeah, you're hired, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so right now, Hera, chilling, nothing but chill, okay? I I'm a 15% faster imp, I got, okay, three less vills, but I got the water, that I'm still, you know, making use of the fist traps, I've got so much vision, I've got more Mangadai numbers, and I'm expanding. All is good. All is good. Where does it go wrong? You'll see in a second. Right here. This is when it goes wrong. Why? Why? No, we're walking this way. I was debating. I was like, okay, do I castle here or do I castle forward? And I castle forward and I almost throw the game. Tato went three defensive castles and of course he will win any treb war. He's got three castles here. We're putting in trebs and, and whatnot. All I had to do was put the castles back here and chill. It was an even game here, but I had more Magnetai numbers and more map control. All I had to do was chill and I just couldn't do that. So in hindsight, and I think you guys, a lot of you guys on, on T90 stream were probably saying the same thing. This castle, and I would advise against it all the time, never do the castle like this. Better would be the castle here, take the stone, prevent him from running through at any point in the game. Next castle here, and next castle here. Bam, I, I work my way to the belt on top. 
and I've got full castle coverage and full Mangadai production. What this does, what this does, is that I, first of all, put my castle forward, so at that risk of losing it. Second of all, if I want to do a treb war versus him, sure I'm up faster than Imperial Age, but I have to reinforce the trebs from all the way back here. It takes so long for them to walk uh, to the front. Also, if I lose just one castle, I will consequentially lose all my trebs that are underneath it. So you're gonna see how far behind I, I, I fall because of this castle. Such a bad, such a bad play. What was going through your mind at the time? I thought I was much further ahead and I was like, listen, I want to place the trep down his castles. That's what I said to myself. And I figured I have the economy, I should be able to pull it off. Unfortunately, it wasn't the case. He's got more economy than me and even though I have more numbers, even though I have the position, uh, if an all out fight, and he has masonry already. Oh my God, he's so good actually. He already has masonry, well played. It made it harder for me to kill his castles. So, you know, even if I've got the, the map control, this is not what I should do with them. Yeah, so here I'm going to lose my castle, which is Mangadai production, it's protection to my trebs, it's so much here to lose this castle. And I invest in the Siege Engineers as well, which is such an, such an like expensive tech that doesn't really do anything here. It just gives me plus one range and a bit more damage on my trebs. Better would be to get masonry, and better was to not do this in the first place, so... Not the best here. And look, I can't even move my Mangadai, I have to go inside my castle and out the other side. He gets an easy trap snipe there, I get... One manga in exchange. You know, Castle goes down at this point. I'm thinking, I, I, I fucked up, man. Like, I, I screwed up. This is terrible. Yeah, I think Masonry was a great play. I agree, Kern. Like, that was super smart. I didn't even realize that at the time, by the way. Didn't even realize that then. Oh, uh, now I'm losing my traps one by one. I, I can't kill this Castle. He's got Masonry and plenty of repairs. And, and what's stopping him from running in here? Elite manga die, on the way for both, both people. Or both players, he's got six more Mangadai because he's producing uh, from home directly from three castles. And if we take a fight, he's got elite faster than I do. He's got elite Mangadai, I still have normal Mangadai. And uh, now I get my elite, but it's too late. It's too late. This was a massive throw of the game. At this point, I realized, like, I'm dead. I'm dead. I, I run back and I should have instantly lost the game off this. Do I run back? Okay, yeah, I ran back with two Mangadai. Nice. Good job, Hera. At least save the treb for later. And what do you do now? Like, I have three castles. This is where I should have made my castles beforehand. And now I go for the gold. But he, he has three castle production as well. He's got five trebs left over. And he's got ten Mangadai extra right off the bat as well. He has so much more to his disposal than I do. Uh, and there's not really much I can do to claw back in the game. Like, it's just what it is. Uh, this is actually a good play. I tried to raid him with two Mangadai. I at the very least... Take his attention, and then when he's distracted, now I go in to snipe his traps. So I think that was actually a good play from him, for me, and not a good play from him to send his whole army to chase two Mangadai. So, I mean, that, that was my first move to come back here, because killing these traps is super important. <laughs> I lost one Mangadai from a trap, though. Not the best. Did I kill three traps here? Oh, I misclicked so much. Oh god, I misclicked so much. I, I could have got a third there if I just hit it. I don't know why I was dancing so much. But again, I'm falling more and more behind in, in Mangadai numbers now. and I, I told myself, I, I don't know what to do at this point. I, I see I have a lot of food and wood. And I think the price at the market were super low. I think the only way I survive now is to go skirmishers. I have four relics, so I'm thinking I have a good late game position if I can get there. But it's going to be a ton of work to get there, that's for sure. I dropped down six ranges here. I'm going to full turtle mode now. And I'm doing anything I can to just stay alive. That's all I'm doing. So let's see when he throws here. Uh, L. Steph, thank you for Twitch Prime. Welcome to the stream. Appreciate the support. He's got double my Mangadai here. It's not even. He's got more than double my, my Mangadai. He's got three traps to my one. I, ooh, I sniped one of his Mangadai with my trap and it goes down. But, uh. There's nothing to do here, right? Like, I, I still don't understand how I survived this, man. He has Hussar Mangadai production. All I had to do was move from one castle to the next, and I couldn't do anything about it. Clear all my castles. Clear my monastery, even. So I, I probably could have done the skirm transition even earlier, but it's coming in at, at a good time. I already have all the upgrades on the skirms, so it's coming in nicely. He's got Hussars, but you know what? He, like The Hussars don't have the plus 4 armor, so like as Mongols, they're not that uh, oppressive. They do have more HP, of course, though.
All right. So now he still has 11 more Mangala than I do. He's got Hisaurus, which counter my skirmishes. However, 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 I do have a uh, pretty good micro here. So I use my skirmish to snipe the Mangala, and my Mangala at the back to snipe the Hisaurus. He does good micro as well. Patrols, which is all he needs to do here. <laughs> um, but somehow I'm able to claw my, my way back in the game. I think the main thing, though, is me having access to this gold. This was huge. Having access to these resources was huge. He still didn't move out here. Big mistake from Taro. He's got the map control, and look, he's still crammed in his base, even though he could have expanded a lot earlier. However, he's got tons of gold here. And you know what? What if he went pure Mangadai? What if he went pure Mangadai and no Hisaurus? So at this point, I go in for the traps, and now I'm feeling actually quite good. After the snipe of the traps, I'm feeling quite nicely about my position. I run away here, try to trade as much as possible. And now I know he's got no more traps. So, I'm behind the Magadar number, sure. But he doesn't have anything to threaten my castles. And I still have... What is that? Two castles producing Magadar? It's not too bad. It's been worse. It has been worse. He patrolled into the house, eh? Oh, that was bad, yeah. That was definitely bad. But he's... He's taking good fights here, man. He's taking good fights. Somehow I dodged like half of those shots. and I'm just desperately trying to... Get my Mangadai safe and sound. And now I'm also transitioning to Hisaurus myself if I can get there. But I think the big thing is that I had free gold mining on this side of the map. Whereas he he didn't pressure the side and he didn't like take his side as well. So he was so tunnel vision down the center. Not ideal for him. The problem is he had too many villagers. Oh, possibly. He's at 147 vills. Yeah, that's, that's a possibility for sure. And I think the second problem is him investing into Siege Ram and Onager. Big mistakes. Guys, Mongol Wars, it's about Mangadai and Hisars. That's all you need to do in the late game. Only do Siege Onager if you can afford it and if you've got a lot of gold. But don't do Siege Ram ever. And Onager itself does very little. So Siege Onager, Mangadai, if you can afford it, if you've got the gold. Other than that, it's Mangadai, Hisar, and that's it. So at this point... Tato's still winning by far. Like it's still, it still should be his game. He's got more Mangadai. He's got more momentum on the field. He's got his Hussar transition already down. I am just still stuck on the skirmishers. Only now we'll get my economy back on track. Trying to expand my base, and I've got less Mangadai to defend. So I'm in just a weird position. But this is the comeback. He overextends here. Why are we trying to take down the TC with his Mangadai? It just feels like it's so. It's such a waste of your unit's time to do this instead of raiding back here, keeping control of the map, you know, I don't know, pushing from the front. He's just taking out a TC that's kind of irrelevant at this point. And now I use this as a way to claw back in the game. My skirmishers that are useless in this matchup are only useful to snipe Mangadai, and I'm using my Mangadai to get good trades and protect my skirmish from the Hisar. So let's see what I can do here. I get a really nice engagement here. And this is my way back in the game. So not only is he doing Siege, which is very slow, first of all, and takes a lot of resources, he's also, meanwhile, wasting his Mangadai numbers. Those two happening at the same time. So simultaneously, two mistakes cost him the game, in my opinion. This is his throw. By the way, he's patrolling into the mining camp as well. I also patrol downhill for some reason. I should have walked to the top of the hill first, especially with my Mangadai, and patrolled on the top of the hill. I try to do that now, you can tell, but still not the best engagement. And scrims suck, man. They, they fire so slowly, like... They, they're, they're really bad compared to Mangadai, honestly. Uh, but over on this on this side, he is going for the Siege Push. But the Siege Push dies to Mangadai, and I'm getting good trades. Now I have more Mangadai. How the turntables, man. I've got more Mangadai than him. He's stuck with, with just Hussar and Siege. And, 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 like, there's nothing he can really do to clap my Mangadai now. I can just defend and, and clear the siege from the back. <laughs> yeah, I, I, after... I don't know if you guys have watched Office, but after Michael said it that way, that's just how I say it now. How the turntables and, and not how the tables have turned. It's too good, man. How the turntables. Alright, so he's trying to raid me, but uh, like, Mongol War isn't about raids in my opinion, or at least not at this point. It's about Mangadai numbers. If there's still gold on the map, it's about Mangadai numbers. And the Hussars are just made to tank. I've got my stables now. I've got three castles. I'm getting my fourth one out here soon, I think. But I'm still mining gold. And the Siege Ram accomplished a grand total of nothing. They killed two houses. That's it. 
How is Kipchak compared to Mangadai? Uh, it's night and day, man. Uh, Mangadai is way better. Kipchak is... <laughs> it's just so bad in comparison at, at all points of the game, pretty much. I'm not superstitious. I'm not superstitious. I'm a little stitious. You know what my favorite Micro Scott quote is, though? This is it. It's... I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. That, that was like my favorite Michael Scott quote ever. Like it just, it means nothing. It sounds stupid. It's just, it's so good. Okay, so now that I see the Onagers, and with a bit of, uh, with a bit of Micro, the Onagers do pretty much nothing in this matchup. Mangadai are so strong against them. And as you can see, he's still doing great work raiding me, preventing me from getting onto the golds. But, oh, and he takes my relics. At this point, I choked. I was like, oh, I gotta go to this back. Instantly dropped the monastery in the back. And I'm feeling pretty confident. Now I feel like it's an even game. And I just have the relics. I'm on 105 bills. He's on 138. Big mistake to be on 138. He needs more He needs more military now. Because more military means he's taking better trades. And better trades means you don't need to replenish military. So actually, having more military means you have the better economy. Does that make sense? If you take better fights, you don't need as many resources to replenish your losses. And so you don't need as many villagers. Which means you can take better fights. It's like a cycle that means that you just have be the better position when you have more military. So I think I found a much better balance staying on 100 bills. Uh, whereas he's stuck on 130 bills or 140 bills and he doesn't have the military to take good fights. Oh man, alright. So he's still stuck with the siege. The Onagers aren't that bad. I try to go for a massive raid here, but I think twice about it. Because I'm just thinking, I have to run through three castles and Mangadai on my tail. So I'm like, okay, maybe let's not do that. Maybe let's run back. Thanks, DE. Run! <laughs> it makes total sense, but at the same time, it makes no sense at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it, man. Dude, if everyone talks like Michael Scott, we'd have no world problems, I'm telling you. He did have a lot of food eco. Yeah, but the food eco, like, look at this. My military, my army, it was impossible to shake. How can you kill this army? He simply does not have the numbers. And me killing villagers at this point is doing him a favor, by the way. My favorite is the dinner party episode. Oh, that was really good as well. Oh, that was such a mess. Him and Jan is like the most... Like, toxic relationship ever. Alright, so he goes with some Onager plays, and... If I have good micro, I should never lose this first Onagers. But actually, a lot of my Mangadai are weak. Yeah, so this is not the best position for me. I should keep my Mangadai at the back. Patrol? Do I give this up? I think I give this up. Yeah, I just patrol at the back to kill some Hussars, meanwhile. But I give up my, my forward position. I don't want to go too deep. Because if I lose my Mangadai, I lose the game. So I'm playing it very cautious here. I'm aware there could be Onagers popping it out here any second. Oh my god, actually a beautiful split. Holy shit, did he- Holy shit, that was sick reaction, man. I didn't even remember that one. Oh god, that was sick. Yeah, so I, I dodged the, the Onager shots and... Well, I keep my Mangadai alive, basically. What to use to use in, uh, in Mongo War? Just Trebs. Trebs is the only thing you should use. Trebs and camp them, that's it. Slow push, that's what it's about. He tried to rush it with Siege Ram. Not a good play. Yeah, I'm taking my relics back slowly as well, and the safe monastery. I'm shift clicking this guy. This guy's got a job, man. Here, back here, back here, back here. And meanwhile, I got more Mangadai, which means I take better fights. Okay, <clears throat> never mind. He's got more Mangadai, which means he's taking better fights. But in a much more real sense, I have much more production coming up, so I, I should be taking better fights here as well. I'm going to regroup, though. I'm going to regroup, so yeah. He's taking better fights. I regroup. I start massing more Mangadai. Then I start getting better fights. And the Onagers are just doing so little here, honestly. Like, they got no place in this fight. Okay, I don't know what happened here. I, I remember this. I potatoed so hard. Like, my movements here just made no sense. But my idea was to regroup a little bit. And I... Yeah, so the, I don't know what happened here. I have no idea what happened. I lost like 5 mega for free. But now I re-patrol, and this is a good fight. So I sniped the Onager instantly with 5 mega die very easily. And now I patrol. The reason why you should spread out your mega die... Okay, hold on. Pro tip! Pro tip! Listen. Take notes to get the notepad out. He's got Mangadai clumped up. The reason you spread out your Mangadai is because if you spread out your Mangadai, you don't all hit the same unit. So there's no overkill. You spread out and look, I'm hitting this Mangadai, I'm hitting this Mangadai, this one, this one. I'm hitting all the Mangadai on the edge. If you stack them all up, they all shoot at the same target, which is the closer target, which is always the Hussar. 
So spending them out, I'm able to hit Mangadai, and I'm able to not overkill, okay? This is how you take fights in late game with range units, all right? So let's take a look at how this happens in slow motion here. So I would be hitting the Mangadai from the side as well. And look, every time a Hussar gets close, look, look at his Mangadai. They all shoot the same units, and it's overkilling them, and it's only hitting Hussar. So getting the spread out fight is the way to take these late game fights. And as you see in slow motion there, just the difference. It was about equal in Mangadai numbers, but me doing that gave me instantly the lead. And not a lot of people know that. How to spread them out? You go in the spread out formation. Oh, it's down here. I can't show you. You do the staggered formation, and then you patrol. And then if they're not spread out, you manually spread them out as well. Uh, thank you, Mr. or Mrs. Uh, Geffa. Geffa, thanks for the Twitch Prime for two months, and he's saying I love you. Love you too, man. Appreciate it. Not a lot of people know that, I'm telling you. But we actually dropped subs here. Wow, we, we're, we're getting further away from the 2k gold than, than, than we're getting closer to it, man. It's so hard to get that shit. Looks like Tato didn't know that. Well, maybe he knew that, but he just didn't think of it in the time being. But uh, I'm telling you, like a lot of people don't know that, even even top players. And that's something I, I even started doing recently, to be honest. I used to take fights in, in tight areas, and I probably still do because it's a habit. But you should always spread out if you have the space. All right. So he's, you know, just a lot of back and forth at this point, and. It's really about just taking better fights. Now he got his vill count. Look at this. He's got a vill count down to 100. This is when he can start taking better fights. This is what it's all about here. Um, however, now I'm getting castles on the sides. And I'm, I've am i got a much more like well-positioned base. Castles are defensively. I've got a lot of stables here as well. He's got a stable spread out. It's no big deal. But we're both just playing pretty well at this point. Is it the same for all archers? M more or less, yeah. More or less, yeah. So I think I'm going to fast forward a little bit through this. Uh, but what's up Shadow? I didn't see you there. How's it going, man? Dropping the T90 pants emote as well. I'm going to fast forward a little bit because there's a lot of back and forth that happens here. But it's just a lot of... If you think about it, nothing's really happening, right? It's just him raiding. I'm clearing Hussars. I'm killing Hussars. He's killing my Hussars, my Vils. And every time he kills my Vils, I'm replenishing them. Right? And I'm, I'm sure he's doing the same as well. He's replenishing small amounts of Vils as well. So we're all trying to keep around 100 to 110 villagers. Alright, so yeah, the score is very close and nothing much happens here. I'm going to wait till he goes for this push on this castle. That's the next big moment of the game, I think. Ah, this is an interesting comment. So, did you know it's also historic? Wellington used to do that. He would spread army in line, whereas the French fought in, t uh, fought in columns. There you go, so it's not just Age of Empires, it's also real history, real life. Good stuff. Okay, so now, great play from Tato. We can get a clap in the chat, actually. This is the the way back in the game is to tread down my castles. Again, this is a little bit too far forward. This castle should have been back here, defending my golds, not out here, defending nothing. <laughs> We're defending one gold. So he, why this is a good play? He he gathered four trebs. You can't react to four trebs. As soon as I saw that, I was like, well played. I knew it was you when I saw first game play. <laughs> hey, no fans day. Thanks for the tier one for 14 months. Yeah, a lot of people spotted me right away. The true fans, I suppose, spotted me instantly. So glad to know you know how I play, man. Appreciate it, continued support, bro. Oh, and that, like he just he also snipes my manga die with the trebs. This was all around a great sequence for Taro. And I have to just retreat and give it up here. He gets the score lead as well. Yeah, he gets really nice trades here. So stacking four trebs is the reason I couldn't react, but I do a nice thing as well. I take the fight, uh, and I go for the trap snipe. So, I don't know if this is worth it. I, I lose my traps, but I, well, I, he loses his traps, but I snipe. Uh, but I lose my Mangadai. Snipe that Onager, and he ends up losing Mangadai retreating as well. So, I think overall this is a great trade for me. But he did end up getting a castle from it as well, and runs away with some of his Mangadai. So, when using staggered formation and then patrol, do you patrol into the opponent's units or horizontally? You patrol into the opponent's units, and they will spread out naturally, trust me. And if you do it on stand ground, it helps as well, I think. But I'm not too sure about that. Alright, Lucky 90 TV, what's up? Or 900 TV, rather. Nice, great advice. No problem, man. No problem. This is, this is what I'm here to do, guys. Like, if you guys have any questions, this is the time for it. We're all trying to learn and get better at the game. Including me. At all levels, doesn't matter. This is what it's about. Hello, Goldstones, what's up? Hope you're doing well. What's up, uh, RDM? 
Andre would have worked against most players. Well, yeah, fair enough. But at the same time, you shouldn't you shouldn't make plays that only work when your opponent plays bad. So that, that's what that's what I think about that. To be honest. Karu, what's up? Jack and O'Shea, thank you for gifting us up to Urban Tur. Appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for the support. And yeah, again, we, we go back in the late game where he's sniping Bills and I'm chasing his stars and every time he kills Bills, I replenish them. It's all about keeping Magadai numbers here. So we're going to fast forward a little bit. And I, I don't want to take any decisive fights. Actually, I want to see who wins that fight. He's at 35, I had 33. So that was like actually a good decision to run away there because he would reinforce. I just want to take a look there. My idea was I don't want to take any fights that could throw me the game because I, I, I learned from my mistake at, at the first castle. I didn't want to throw the game. So I figured let's play you know, standard and let's just play clean and, and not try and take risks with the fights. Am I going to play some ranked soon? Yeah, after I review this series and the finals, which takes like 10-15 minutes, it was quick. Um, I can play some ranked games and we'll have a good time there as well. So if you guys are here for the ranked games, just stick around or come back in an hour. Um, we'll, we'll just finish reviewing Hidden Cup and then play some of those. <laughs> I, I love roasting myself, man. It's, it's so good. I, I, I'm going to tell you. After they happened, I was super depressed because I felt like I let my fan base down. But you guys were like showing me love after afterwards and telling me I, I did a nice job in the tournaments. And so, and, you know, you guys saw past the finals, and after the fact, now it's, it's you know I'm fine. I'm happy to roast myself as well. All right. So at this point, again, who's got more? Look at this. I have 82 villagers, man. I'm I'm winning these fights by a long by a long shot. It's not even close because I got way more bills. Yes, on the downside you know, of having less bills, I don't have as much resources coming in. But at the same time, I'm winning more fights. So he's forced to replenish way more than I am. He's dropping more stables now. I'm taking out his stables on the front as fast or as, as much as I can. Not as fast as I can, just slow and steady. But it's really about keeping him off the gold and taking constant good fights. Did I reach his ballistics? Of course, yeah. At this point, I've got all the upgrades, 100%. Yeah, so look at this. Every time we take a fight, I'm just going to end up winning it. Why? Because I've got more population invested onto Hussars on the field. I've got less villagers. I've got 150 military compared to 69 military who can say nice in the chat. But look at the fights. Like, there's nothing that he can do to win these fights. He will always lose. I have more units. The math is on my side. Who was the maid? It was Joan. Oh, I'm kidding. It was Taro. <laughs> You were by far the you were by far the most impressive slash entertaining player up until the finals. Anyways, hey, thank you, Dave Show. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, and there you go. I just end up winning most of these fights, getting good trades. This is a mistake, I think. I get a little overzealous here, trying to snipe Mega numbers, but I've got just less than him. He's got thirty. I've got well in this in this group only eighteen. So I, I don't think this is actually a good choice for me. But I tried to thin out his Mega number, so I had the right idea, not the right execution. But at this point, he's dropping his pop. He's at 135, and he's got no economy. Why? Because he kept taking weaker and weaker trades until eventually he cannot hold. Fast forward to the end of the game now. There's nothing he can do. He tries desperately to get the gold. I prevent him from getting there, and he's on 135 pop. And I can do this all day. I got gold, I got four relics, I've got stables, and I can just continue reinforcing. And if I feel like I need more bills, I'll make a few more bills. But there you go, man. This is the textbook Mongol late game, I think. Obviously, the relics help tons in the late game. I think that was my win condition, just to stall the game and you know play off the relics. Well played to title. This could have gone either way. And I think this was the deciding game of the series, putting me up 2-1. to one. Let's take a look at the units killed. A yeah, little bit more for me. Economy, probably more for him. Why? Because he had more relics. So you, can, you guys see how... The, or sorry, he had more villagers. You guys see how that plays out? Uh, relic goals for me, way more, of course, and a uh, timeline. Doesn't tell you a whole lot, but it does. It does tell you that I had more military. Look at this military, the dark, the dark green, the dark blue. I had more of that in the late game. Awesome stuff, guys. So that was uh, game three, putting me up two one. Game four is 